Number 29, professional application. Two piloted satellites approach one another at a relative speed of 0.25 meters per second, intending to dock. The first has a mass of 4 times 10 to the 3 kilograms, and the second a mass of 7.5 times 10 to the 3 kilograms. If the two satellites collide elastically rather than dock, what is their final relative velocity? All right, so um, it's actually a pretty involved question. Um, so before we begin, just uh, strap on your algebra seatbelt. All right, um, we're going to need it for this one. So uh, first thing is we're going to start with some simple ideas, and then it's going to get a little more complicated, not complicated, but just the math, you know, the algebra just become a little tricky. Um, but let's start with a few simple ideas. So we can approach this problem uh, basically from, and we need to approach this problem both from a um, kinetic energy perspective and from a momentum perspective. All right. So first let's uh, look at the kinetic energy of the system. Now uh, it's an elastic collision. We are to assume that the initial kinetic energy is the same as the final. So let's write down an equation. So we can say that the kinetic energy initially should equal the final kinetic energy. That should be fairly straightforward. Now, I'm dealing with two satellites, right? One satellite is moving to the right, the other satellite is moving to the left. And therefore, after they collide here in the middle, right, one is probably going to go the other direction, and then the uh, V2, the second object will go in the opposite direction of, of the first object. So uh, we're going to have four terms when we now expand this, right? So if I were now to expand the initial set, remember there's two uh, satellites colliding initially. So therefore, I would have one half, oops, one half times the mass of the first object multiplied by the velocity of that first object before the collision, okay, squared, plus one half times the mass of the second object multiplied by the velocity of that second object before the collision, squared. And that will then equal the final values, right? So the final value here for the first object will be half multiplied by the mass of that first object, multiplied by that first object's velocity after the collision squared, plus then one half times the mass of the second object, multiplied by the velocity of the second object after the collision squared. Okay, so already you can see this is getting a little more complex, but not bad so far. Now, uh, why don't we simplify this a little bit, all right? Notice each term has a half in it. So what can we do? We can just factor it out and cancel that, right? So it basically works down to now m1 v1 before the collision squared plus m2 v2 before the collision squared should equal m1 v1 after the collision squared plus m2 v2 after the collision squared. Okay, so now uh, let's leave it for there. Uh, let's leave it there for now. Let's move on to um, momentum. So momentum basically <clears throat> is the same idea here, right? That we have the momentum being conserved, okay? So the momentum initially has to equal the momentum finally. Okay, let's expand these. So it's basically gonna be a very similar formula to this, okay? And that'll tell us something then. So we have M1 V1 before the collision plus M2 V2 before the collision should equal m1 v1 after the collision plus m2 v2 after the collision. All right. So now I notice that, hey, you know, these two formulas here and here look very, very similar. They get a lot of similar terms in there. Um, maybe should I start substituting? What should I do here? So there's, by the way, several ways to approach this problem, but why don't we just, uh, let, let's just think about this for a second. Um, pretend I told you, so pretend we knew the kinetic energy, all right, the initial. Let's say it was 5. That also must mean that the final kinetic energy is also 5, right? Okay. And let's say I told you the momentum of the system was 2, all right? That also must mean that the momentum after, or the final momentum, is also the same, all right? So that's also 2. Now, can I also say this? Can I also say that the kinetic energy initially divided by, I'm just going to create a ratio, or you're going to say, well, why are you dividing? All I'm doing is creating a ratio, all right? Uh, 
should equal here the kinetic energy final divided by the final momentum. Well, let's see. What was the initial value here for the kinetic energy? What well, was 5? Okay, what was the final kinetic energy? Well, that was 5. Okay, what was the initial momentum? 2. So that's 5 over 2. And then what was the final value? That's also 2, right? So is it true that 5 over 2 is equal to 5 over 2? Yeah, I think you'd say so. So it's also true then that this ratio should be true. So actually what I'm going to look to do is I'm going to look to create a ratio between the kinetic energies and the momentums. Okay, there's, by the way, other ways to do this, but this is just the way I'm seeing it. And I, I think it might be, I don't know, I, I think it's easiest this way, but everybody views a problem differently. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm noticing since I have a lot of similar terms, like I got M1, 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 M1. All right, I'm going to try to then get all the M1s onto one side of the equation and all the M2s onto the other. All right, so basically for this equation here, Let's subtract this m1 v1a squared on over m1 v1a squared. And let's then subtract. So that cancels there, right? And then let's bring this term on over to that side. So it's going to be minus m2 v2b squared minus m2 v2b squared. All right, and let's write the resulting equation now. So now we're going to have m1. Oops. Now I'm going to have m1 v1 b squared minus m1 v1 a squared. That will then equal this term, right? m2 v2 a squared minus m2 v2 b squared. Okay, now let me factor out the common m's, okay? So now the left side here will work out to be m1 times v1b squared minus v1a squared. Great, and that will equal then factor out the m2s on this side, okay? So that's gonna now equal m2 v2a squared minus v2b, all right, squared. Okay, great, so let's stop here. Well, let's just stop here, right? All right, guys, have a good day. Now, we still gotta continue, so uh, let's do the same thing for the momentum equation, okay? So I'm going to then subtract this term on over to the left-hand side. I'm going to try to bring all the m1s to the left and all the m2s to the right. All right so subtract the m1 v1a. Subtract the m1 v1a. And then same thing, that'll cancel. Then subtract the m2 v2b. And subtract the m2 v2b. Okay, so what do we get now? Now we're gonna get M1, oops, M1 V1B minus M1 V1A. Let me make that a little neater. M1 V1A is equal to M2 V2A minus M2 V2B. Okay, great. Now do the same thing. Factor out the common M1 here. So it's gonna be M1, M1 times V1B minus V1A is all equal to then factor out the common M2 there. So V2A minus, minus V2B. All right, so now we have this equation. Now basically what I'm gonna do is I just did some algebra so I should still have equal ratios, okay? So now I'm gonna to look to create a ratio between these two things. All right, so uh, let's view it, and you can do this either put the, I mean you could put the, um, momentum on the top if you want, it doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna do it the kinetic energy on the top, all right? So basically, this is going to be one side of my uh, uh, ratio, all right? So let me write it on the right-hand side here, guys. So it's gonna be M1, I'm gonna give myself a little more room, M1 times V1B squared minus V1A squared, Okay, and that is equal to, now let's, so this is the first side, and that's gonna be equal to, again, the, this piece, right? M2 times V2A squared minus V2B squared. 
All right, so now same thing. Let's take this side of my momentum equation and put it here under the, uh, under the um, kinetic energy. So here I have M1, V1B minus V1A. And then same thing, this right-hand side, place it under the right-hand side over here. So here we have M2, okay, V2A minus V2B. Okay, so, wow. Now what does this allow us to do? This allows us to cancel the masses. So what's interesting here, they told us the masses, right? But guess what? You don't need to know it, all right? So, I mean, to answer this question, the reason why is because they're asking us for the relative velocity at the end, all right? So the masses are canceling. So here, let's rewrite it now. So here we'll have, and then I'm probably gonna have to erase some of the other work. So here we have now M1B squared minus V1A squared divided by, I don't have to put the brackets anymore, uh, V1B minus V1A. Okay, that shall equal V2A squared minus V2B squared all over V2A minus V2B. Okay, so this is now my new equation. All right, now let me erase some of this other stuff. All right, let me erase this. So now I'm starting to simplify the problem a little bit. Right now I have an equation that just relates all the velocities, right? And now remember the whole goal was to try to find, um, to try to find the relative velocity at the end. Remember they told us the relative velocity at the beginning. And let me just detail that actually a little bit. So here's V vector one, right? For the velocity, here's V two, the vector two for the second velocity. And we know that their relative velocities compared to one another have to be point two five meters per second. So how, what kind of an equation can I make here that relates these two uh, velocities? Well, if you think about it, they're opposing in direction, right? So I'm gonna write something like this. V1 minus V2 should equal 0. 0, uh, excuse me, 0. 0.250, right? This should be a true equation. Now, just think about it for a second. Pretend V1 was uh, five. Well, yeah, that's fine. Doesn't really matter what it is. Actually, let me make the numbers a little easier. Pretend it's one, okay? So V1 is one. And pretend V2 is 1.5, all right? Now remember, V1 here is pointing to the right, therefore it's positive. Okay, I should put the positive over here. It's not chemistry. And uh, the uh, V2, right, is pointing to the left, and therefore it's negative. Now, if we take these values, if you take one and you plug it in for V1 here, and you take negative 1.5 and plug it in for V2 here, it would then be one minus a negative 1.5, which, which would give us a positive 0 0.250, okay? So basically what I'm trying to show here is that somehow, some way, Right. And, oh, by the way, let me also, because here in my equations, right, I got Bs and As right before the collision, after the collision. So let me be a little more specific about what these Vs represent. This velocity, these, these are, I'm um, considering these velocities before the collision, right? So this is V1B, and then this is going to be V2B, all right? So these are both before the collision. So basically what I'm trying to do now, and this is the tricky part, is to try to find this... All right, well, let me circle. Try to find this in this crazy mess. Okay, that's the goal. Now, it looks like we're close here at the bottom, but we're not really because this is V1 before minus V1 after. Right, and this is V2 after minus V2 before. We don't have V1 before minus V2 before. All right, so basically my idea now is somehow, some way, I got to simplify this thing. Right now, there can be a bunch of ways to do it. All right, but the way I'm looking at doing it is, I I I, I recognize this pattern right from mathematics and whatnot, from algebra and doing all that uh, pre work. Right, that's like prerequisite to this course. Um, I'm noticing here in the denominator that I have, you know, 
one term subtracted from another. And I also notice that I have some squared terms in the numerator. So I'm thinking to multiply by the conjugate, right? Do, do you guys remember that term, conjugate? So basically, let's multiply this whole fraction, okay, by the conjugate of the denominator. All right, so let me set that up over here. Let's rewrite it. So basically, it's going to be V1B, V1B squared minus V1A squared, okay, over uh, V1B minus V1A. And now I'm going to multiply that by the conjugate of the denominator. So it's V1B plus V1A. That's what the conjugate is, okay? So if you have something like A plus B, the conjugate of that would simply be, would simply be A minus B, okay? Or if this were A minus B, the conjugate of that would simply be A plus B. Fairly straightforward. So that's basically what I'm doing. Now remember, I have to do it to both numerator and denominator uh, because V1B, this is like multiplying by one, right? V1A. Right, this whole term is just one. It's the same numerator as denominator, so this is like five over five or, or six over six, right? So it's just one. So I'm really not manipulating this uh, ratio by any value, okay? I'm just multiplying it by one. Now what happens here? Well, here's the, here's the key. Don't look to distribute the negative, uh, excuse me, the numerator. Don't look to distribute that at all, okay? Just keep it how it is. What I want to do is I want to distribute the denominator, all right? So I want to take, right, this is basically FOIL, right, the FOIL method. So we're going to take this value multiplied by this, this value multiplied by that. Actually, let me do it this way, this by this, right, this by, whoops, this by that, then this by this, and then that by that, okay? So I'm sure you rem remember all that from your quadratics and stuff, right? So, um... Okay, so the numerator let's keep as V1B squared minus V1A squared times, okay, in brackets, V1B plus V1A. Now let's divide it by. Now you can do all that math I mentioned. I'm just going to simplify it by, I mean, this is the beauty of the conjugate here. If you, and you can remember this, if you have A plus B, all right, times A minus B, It'll always work out to be a squared minus b squared, always. Okay, so that's like a simple rule. Actually, I'm just going to leave it up here. Okay, so let's just apply this simple rule here. I told you how to do it if you wanted to do it the long way, uh, but let's just use the simple rule. So that's basically what I have, right? This is a minus b, and this would be a plus b. So it should simply be just a squared minus b squared. So in other words, this is my a, right? So that's v1. B. I know it's getting confusing because there's B's and A's all over the place. So that's squared minus then V1A squared. Okay, and oh, look what happened. Look at this. Aren't these two the same? All right, that's getting, we're getting somewhere. Now remember, I only looked at half of this fraction, or excuse me, half of this ratio. So guess what I got to do now to this side? I do the same thing. Okay, so that's equal to, so that's going to be V2A squared minus V. 2b squared all over v2a minus v2b. And now simply multiply that uh, fraction by the conjugate of the denominator here. So that's going to be v2a plus v2b over v2a plus v2b. Remember that's like multiplying it by 1, so we didn't manipulate anything. So now same thing, okay? Let me place the equal sign here. Leave the numerator alone. So write V2A squared minus V2B squared multiplied by V2A plus V2B. Okay, all divided by now, again, we can use the conjugate rule just like we did over here, all right? So this simply works out to be V2A squared uh, minus V2B squared. And look again, lo and behold, look, these two terms are the same, all right? So now, where, where do we go from here mathematically? Well, now, think about it this way. Pretend, right, just pretend that these are numbers, right? This is, this is a whole term here, right? And this is the same term in the denominator. So this would be like saying 5, you know, times 6 divided by 5 is what? 
Well, it's just six, right? It's just six. We can simply get rid of these two terms. Okay, so they cancel. All right, so let's cancel those two terms. And then let's cancel these two terms. And you see how we're getting a, a simpler place now? So what's the result of this equation now? Well, it's just this equal to this. So let's write that over here on the top. I'm going, uh, yeah, I'm just going to write it over here. So we have now V1B plus V1A equals V2A plus V2B. Right? So that looks cool. Now, let's look. Remember the whole goal again. So here it's nice and simple. Now we're getting simple. The whole goal is to, is to find this. I got to find this in this equation. So can you find it? Well, here's the V1B, right? Here's the V1B. And then I got to find now V2B. Well, V2B is on the other side. Well, that's great though, right? Because we have to subtract one from the other. So, oh great, so what I can do here is I can subtract now my V2B from the, from the right side and subtract it on over to the left. And then why not, while we're at it, just get rid of this, right? Because I, I basically want this term by itself. So now subtract V1A on over to the other side, minus V1A. And now what do we get? Well, remember, this term cancels, this term cancels. So now we're gonna have V1B, okay, minus V2B equals V2A, V2A minus V1A. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. Now notice I have this term, right, which is this term over here. So that is the relative velocity, okay? Now this is basically going to tell me now that 0 0.250 is equal to V2A minus V1A. And guess what this is? This is the relative velocity after the collision, okay? So remember that relative velocity is going to be equal in magnitude, but essentially they're opposite in direction, right? If you have, you know, these two uh, objects right over here on the top right, if you have them coming together, right, and moving together with those vectors, then what's going to happen is the first vector here that was initially pointing in that direction most likely will turn around right and point that way, okay? And then same thing with the uh, second vector here. It was initially pointing to the right, and now it's going to turn around and point to the, excuse me, it's pointing to the left. I should learn my right and left, right? It's pointing to the left here, and then it should turn around and point to the right. All right. So now that doesn't have to be the case, but I'm just showing you that that is a possible case. And that's basically what this is describing. It's saying that initially you're starting with uh, a velocity before the collision for the first vector. And then it's now sign is going to change after the collision because now it's negative. All right. So and by the way, you can make up some numbers if you want, plug them in, you know, solve it. You're going to have to do some substitutions, but you'll realize that no matter what you know, values you come up with, um, this will always be true, okay? So to finally answer the question, the relative velocity after the collision will be exactly the same as the relative velocity before the collision, all right? And that's exactly what we just proved here. So, and by the way, this will always be true for elastic collisions. So that might be good to memorize. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. Thanks for sticking with me on this one. Um, this one was, uh, I think I'm going to have to take a break myself. Um, a lot of stuff all over the place. It's not that hard. It's, it's just long, complicated, and uh, yeah, so I guess it's hard, right? <laughs> um, I know you're probably thinking, well, isn't that like the definition of some? Yeah, yeah, so it, it's a hard problem. Um, but if you do notice, uh, you know, the algebra is what's difficult, and I think the most challenging part about this problem is knowing what to do. You know, how do I necessarily know what to do. That's where a lot of experience and practice comes in, seeing this set up, all right? It would be unreasonable for you to expect yourself and myself too when I first started to just look at this and say, oh yeah, right, that's exactly how you do it. Of course not. 
it just takes practice and now you see this example and you study this example, right? And you will then remember these techniques of multiplying by conjugates. Uh, maybe next time a problem approaches, that's another tool now in, at your disposal. All right, and that's how you really learn. All right, so think about it as you're collecting a whole bunch of tools along the way. And then you got to take out those tools and use them on these problems, depending upon how the problem presents. All right. So thank you guys very much for tuning in. Uh, please remember to subscribe and I look forward to helping you with the next question. Have a great day.